Joining me now, uh, founder and executive director of the Edmund Burke Institute, Dr. Grace Voto. And hey, doctor, uh, always good to have you back here with us. Let's pick it up maybe where we left off. Uh, you know, Asia and uh, America growing at the same rate, uh, you know, kept, they kept in pace with uh, the Catholic Church, kept pace with uh, the expansion of the population. Uh, why, you know, what aren't we doing uh, here in this country uh, that's happening there, perhaps in, in Africa, that's seeing such positive results? Right. I think Jew, uh, Catholics face so many challenges in this country that it looks like we forget that we also have a key responsibility to black ministry. In fact, what we're doing in this country is we are actually cutting back a lot of what we used to do, uh, like provide services in the inner cities which cater to blacks and introduce them to our church. We're, in fact, pulling back from education in the inner cities and reducing the number of professors when we should be going in the opposite direction, trying to use our uh, Catholic charities to draw blacks into the Catholic fold, and especially the excellence of Catholic education, yeah. because uh, blacks really value education. And if we can have uh, outstanding schools and use that education to bring in blacks, we can also then introduce the faith to them. So it's it's ironic that we are doing the opposite in America that we are doing in Africa. In Africa, we are using social services as a bridge to the black community, and in this country, we're withdrawing social services when we really should be expanding them. So, and, and the results are there. We're not making much headway. When I think uh, the point that you raised is absolutely excellent. Can you imagine if black Catholics uh, were preeminent in our political discourse, mm -hmm. how different the political landscape would be, how different a set of values that they would be modeling. Uh, and that is one of the challenges that I want to present to the audience today. How, you know, how often do you speak to a, uh, a fellow a black American and talk to them about the Catholic faith and about what it can represent for them in their lives? And more than that, to identify the, flag, the fact that there is a history, a very vibrant black Catholic history, both in America and around the world. Blacks have a real place in the history of the Catholic Church, and uh, they don't even know it. And we don't do a good enough job explaining it. I can think of just a handful of uh, of Catholic, uh, I guess, black saints. So you got uh, uh, St. Benedict the Moor, right? Uh, who, who's the other one? Who was the first black priest? Um, uh, there was Augustus Tolton. That's him, He was yeah. one of the first black priests in this country. Yeah. There's also St. Moses the Black. Uh, and uh, I want to point the audience to a wonderful priest who wrote a great book on the history of Catholics in America by the name of Father Davis. He's a real uh, treasure of knowledge and information. And one of the things that he highlights is, hey, don't forget that Ethiopia, for example, was a Catholic country before European countries were Catholic. And don't forget that the Catholic religion spread first in the Mediterranean right. before it even went to Europe. So blacks can consider themselves as being really plugged in to the entire universal Catholic heritage. How there was a real historical uh, role for them there. How did we lose them? What happened along the way? Well, in this country, sadly, it, the Catholic Church did not play a, a leading role in abolition, nor did the Catholic Church play a, a leading role in the civil rights movement. And the yeah. Protestant churches did a much better job. However, that doesn't mean that uh, we can't rectify that. We can, take the, we, can, we can take an issue that is dear to the black community, just like the Protestants did, and we can use that to expand our ranks. And there is one issue that I think every black American should be concerned with, and that is the abortion. Oh, yeah. rate. And we as Catholics should be saying, we do not want to exterminate the black American population in this country. We do not want one out of every second black pregnancies to end in death. And we will champion the flourishing of your community. Join us in that crusade. We are going to protect you. I think we can do what the Protestants did so well on other issues. I, I don't get why they don't see what's happening. I mean, if, if that was happening to any other ethnic group, I think they'd be outrage. If the Jewish community was being targeted right now, and uh, you saw Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics literally going into areas where these people are most vulnerable and exploiting them, terminating them, there would be absolute outrage. And yet the African-American community in this country uh, is, as you point out, being targeted. One out of every, what, two uh, pregnancies? One out of every second pregnancy. I mean, that's that's unbelievable. Death. That's 
unbelievable statistic. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you why the black community accepts that. Drew, you know, I used to teach at Howard University, so I know American blacks very, very well. Mm-hmm. They used to have these debates. And uh, basically, one of the great concerns of the black community is they, demogra- they want to get ahead in terms of social mobility. Right. And so one of the arguments I would hear over and over again is that if a young girl gets pregnant, she is going to be stuck in single motherhood land for the rest of her life, and therefore she won't be able to get ahead. And therefore, if you ex- have to exterminate a child in order to increase social mobility, so be it, because that's what blacks need to do. Sadly, sadly, they are falling into the great sin of materialism. The mark of the worth of a human being is not how well they do economically. And we do have a growing number of black Christians who are crying out against this and saying these are totally inverted values. Here's the thing, Doctor. Do they not know they're being targeted? I mean, uh, why, why aren't activists within the African-American community, within the black community, why aren't they, why aren't they making their, their citizenry aware of this? Well, the black Christians are very concerned about it. The problem is that so many blacks have accepted the liberal mantra that abortion is the key to their freedom. It's a key to their liberation. So they don't see it. This is very ironic, Joe. You really hit your, your, you put your nail right on it. Uh, you know, you hit the nail right on the head. They don't see it as a racial issue when they see almost everything else as a racial issue. So you know what's so weird about that? Here's the big disconnect for me. You got guys like Al Sharpton, you got Jesse Jackson, you got these big pro-life uh, or these big uh, leaders within the community. Jackson, at one point in time, from what I understand, started initially being being pro-life. Did, did they did, did these leaders sell their moral values out for some sort of political power? I mean, what, what is it that betrayed uh, you know blacks in this country? Oh, absolutely right. They have been leading the black community astray for decades now on almost every issue. In fact, to be um, a black Democrat, in my view, Drew, is to really accept the idea that you can uphold racial argument on everything on the most essential one, which is the perpetuation of your own race. I mean, does that make any sense? Not at all. Hey, hey, doctor, let me uh, let me open the phones too. I, I want to invite the audience in. If you want to join our conversation right now, uh, if you got questions or comments, uh, I've got to Dr. Grace with me for oh about another segment. So you can join our conversation by calling eight seven seven Rome seven 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 eight seven seven R O M E seven seven seven. We're talking about the Catholic Church having what is right now a golden opportunity to influence the Latino population in America and uh, to uh, welcome in many of our black brothers and sisters. I'm going to take a short break. When we come back, our conversation will continue. Stay with me. 